Bridget Stutchbury is strictly for the birds, and particularly the songbirds. She's a scientist who studies songbird migration, behavior, and social life. She analyzes what their songs mean and how these tiny creatures make their way from as far south as Uruguay to as far north as the boreal forests of Canada, losing up to half of their body weight in the process. A lot of the, the songbirds, um, well, and, and other birds too, the, will fly across the Gulf of Mexico. So a, 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 on their way north, for instance, they'll leave the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula and make landfall somewhere near New Orleans. And it's estimated that this flight is takes 18, 20 hours nonstop. We're dealing with birds that weigh 10 or 12 grams, so pr pretty tiny little birds, and they have to fly nonstop for that long. And sure, they have a tailwind, so it's not all powered flight. They have a little bit of help from the wind. Uh, but they have to put on several grams, or they have to gain weight, maybe 20, 20 to 25 percent extra weight to pork up, and that's <laughs> the fuel they burn as they're flying. And so people have done studies in flight tunnels to sort of convert this into kilojoules per unit time. I don't know what the numbers are. I Miles can't remember. Per <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. I can't yeah. remember. Um, but certainly in terms of, of them being, their whole physiology changes during migration. So if you think of mammals, for instance, uh, things like polar bears will prepare for, for hibernation and they'll start overeating in the fall. Their whole body and physiology changes to allow them to overeat, to allow them to make fat, to allow them to sleep through the winter. I mean, their, their whole body changes, right, on the inside. And the same thing happens with these migratory birds, that during migration, inside their bodies, their whole physiology changes to allow, you know, this incredible weight gain. They burn it off in, in one night flight, weight gain, burn it off the next night, and once they get to the breeding grounds, all of that kind of stops, and they go back to eating normally and kind of being on a diet again. Wow. But they'll burn up a very high percentage of their own body weight in a single night. It's, it's the, like mostly that. it's the fat that they're burning, but it is true, even, say, with humans, that if they overdo it, or if they run into an emergency situation and they need to make energy, they will burn muscle mass, which isn't very healthy mm -hmm. to start burning up your muscle mass in order to keep going. Uh, so on the most part, the sort of optimal migration is built around burning this fat, which is stored temporarily. Uh, mm -hmm. That's their gas tank. Yeah. And then and the large portion of their muscle mass is in the breast muscles and just the muscles that make the wings go. Right, right yeah. I mean, for birds, the, the, their biggest muscles are the flight muscles on their breast. Yeah. 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 You also talk about their physiology in terms of how fast they breathe and how fast their hearts beat and so forth. Can we talk a little about that, too, because that was fascinating. Well, birds have a much higher metabolism than we do. Um, part of that is so that they can power their flight. Um, part of it is because they're small. So generally, small-bodied animals have a higher heart rate and metabolic rate than the larger animals. The birds, in particular, uh, have a very fast heart rate and oxygen consumption. In fact, their lungs are built completely differently than ours because part of burning energy is using up oxygen. So you can't, it's not just a matter of burning the energy, it's a matter of getting the oxygen to fuel those flight muscles. And so their lungs are kind of designed more like a straw than a balloon. So our lungs are kind of like a balloon, right? They fill up and then you, when you exhale, the balloon collapses. Well, they have a one-way airflow through their lungs because that's much more efficient. There's sure, no dead sure. air left sure. behind. It just goes through one way and they extract maximum oxygen out of the air and put it into the blood. And again, this is getting to your question. Part of how their physiology, even down to how the lungs are designed, is all about energy mm -hmm. and fueling the flight muscles because you can't fly without using a lot of energy and you can't use a lot of energy without having your whole oxygen respiration system kind of ramped up a notch as well. Here at The Green Interview, we think that part of our job is to remind ourselves and our viewers of the glorious complexity and subtlety of the natural world. If you appreciated this conversation with Dr. Bridget Stutchbury, you'll also enjoy our upcoming visit with Robert Bateman, perhaps the most celebrated wildlife artist in the world. And you may want to listen in on our conversations with Farley Mowat and Paul Watson, two of the world's greatest defenders of wildlife. For The Green Interview, I'm Silver Donald Cameron. See you next time.